Hello sewers and welcome. I'm Debbie from Sew Simple Bags. Now our, ba our website Sew Simple Bags isn't just about sewing bags. My aim on the site is to also help you to design your own custom bags and become familiar with either pattern making, pattern drafting or making alterations to simple bag patterns so that you can customise things to exactly how you need them. So with that in mind, I thought I would share with you today just a very simple tutorial about how you can make your own pattern. Here we're going to make something for a tool roll. This could be for pens or crayons for our children, um, artist brushes or colouring pens, or something like crochet hooks or knitting needles, or for your sewing room, you could make a tool roll to hold all of your sewing supplies and tools like seam rippers, scissors and rotary cutters. So basically the idea for the, um, for the bag is the same, but the kind of supplies that you might want to put in it will differ. And therefore you could end up with an endless number of pattern variations, none of which is exactly right for you. Therefore, the best way to go about it is to design your own. At this point, I'm doing a little bit of backwards and forwards in time, just to show you the project that actually we've completed at the end of this video. This is my quilted pen roll, which has got a few pens and my seam rippers in, just as an example of what we're going to sew. We have our fold over flap at the top, which covers our tools. And then when we fold and roll, we have our tie that comes around to tie up and keep everything in there nice and secure. So this is what we are aiming to sew. And of course yours will be in whatever size that you need to keep all of your bits and pieces safe and secure. Now I'll get back in my time machine and we'll continue on with designing the pattern. Drafting a pattern is actually pretty simple. I have got a ruler, a pen, the tools that I want to put into my pouch and a piece of brown craft paper. You can use um, some sheets of regular printer paper taped together, even a sheet of newspaper, something that will be large enough for you to be able to draw your own custom pattern. So to make it easy, rather than go anything um, far too big, I'm just going to create an example using some, some pens. So this will be a, a reasonably small tool roll or brush roll in the end. I'm going to use pens and I've also got some examples here of seam rippers, but if you are making something with crayons, crochet, crochet hooks or cosmetic brushes, the idea is going to be exactly the same. So the first thing to do is lay yourself out a nice big large piece of brown paper that you're going to use to draw your pattern and draw yourself a line across the bottom. Now rather than use the bottom of the paper, we need to add seam allowances later on. So we need to give ourselves a little bit of extra room to add those seam allowances on. So I've drawn a line about an inch and a half up from the bottom of my paper, this line here, and this is going to be my starting line. So from there, I've laid out a few examples of the pens or tools that I might want to put in here. This again could be your knitting needles, of course they would be longer, your crochet hooks, of course, are smaller and finer, or cosmetic brushes, or even crayons for children, something like that. And I've laid them out and then just had a brief look and thought, you know, if I lay out these six pens and look at the distance between here and here, it actually works out at roughly six inches. So I can say, although I have got six pens, if I wanted to make something with 12 pens, then 12 inches would be a reasonable size to do it. If you are sewing for something specific, like your uh, sewing tools, then by all means lay all of your tools out side by side and you can see exactly how wide that you'll need it to be. For pens, crochet hooks, um, artist brushes, um, makeup brushes, your pockets might be fairly regular. If it's for sewing tools, then you would need a narrower pocket for your seam ripper and larger pockets for your uh, larger tools such as scissors and rotary cutters. So in that case, it's best to lay them all out and give yourself a little bit of extra room for extra tools that you might get in the future. So here are my six pens and I can see I've got six inches for six pens. I'm going to make it larger and say I need space for 12 small tools being seam rippers, pens or something like that. 
So I need my finished to be 12 inches plus a little bit more. We always want to give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm going to make it say 12 and a half inches, which is convenient because it's the exact same size as my ruler. So I'm going to make a couple of little marks here, 12 and a half inches. And because we want to keep things nice and square, I'm going to, again going to use my ruler. And if this is my bottom line, I'm going to draw myself a line just here, which will be my side and make sure that the line on the ruler here is going directly over my bottom line. I'm on my left hand mark and I can draw my line here. So this is now my left hand side line and I want something 12 and a half inches. So I just me measure 12 and a half across from that line. Again, making sure that it's square across the bottom, square with the sides. And there we have it, my 12 and a half inches wide, that's going to be how long my tool roll will eventually be. Now if we bring back in our tools and just lay my pen just here, give a little bit of space at the bottom, I've got about a quarter of an inch of space, and this is how, how high my tool roll would eventually need to be once folded so that I have room for my pens. Is that my longest tool? I think that is the longest one. If you have scissors, for example, if you're making yours for your sewing supplies, then you would use whatever is your longest tool to determine the height of your tool roll. So yours would be much higher for scissors and sewing tools. And for knitting needles, of course, it would be long. For pens, crochet, crochet hooks, cosmetic brushes, quite short. So I've got a quarter of an inch there. I'm just going to give myself maybe a half an inch or so at the top here to give myself a little bit of space. And now I'm going to draw another line. Again, I'm squaring everything up. And here I'm going to write fold. Because once my tool roll is sewn, my tools will be here, bottom, the top will be up here somewhere, and this part will fold down over those tools so that I can roll it up. Okay, so talking about the part that we're going to fold down, we need to look now at creating a pocket and a fold for our tools. So here are all of my tools and they're going to go in a pocket. How tall do we want our pocket to be? Well, it probably makes no sense to bring the pocket right up here. We won't be able to have easy access to our tools. And again, it depends on what tools you are using as to how tall you might want your pocket to be. I would suggest a good height for your pocket is somewhere between 50% and two thirds. And you can either measure it or you can eyeball it. For me, I think, look, if I look and see where the caps are on my pens, somewhere there probably makes good sense, which is four inches. So let's round it up and make it a nice four inches. And then I will draw myself a line four inches up from the base. I'm going to mark that one pocket and I can even draw myself just a few lines like this to show myself these are the pockets they're going to be down at the bottom so my pen will sit in the pocket here this will be the top and then this will be the fold so how much do we want our fold to be well, I would suggest you want it to be at least as much as the distance between your fold and your pocket, maybe just a little bit more, maybe 50%, but you are creating your own custom, custom design. So you decide based on the kind of tools that you are um, you're including and uh, knitting needles and crochet hooks and things, things that are perhaps longer will need a longer fold than something which is shorter like a pen. So if I have this shape, this uh, distance here, between my fold and my pocket is around, it's just a little under two and a half inches. So I'm gonna make my fold over three inches. So I move that out the way. I can mark here, three inches above my fold line. And that is my top. Now that seems pretty easy so far, but in fact, we almost have our pattern completed. We have 
our pocket piece, we have our outer and our inner already designed and we've decided where our fold is going to be. We're going to mark on where our um, ties would be and our ties want to be pretty much in the centre once we have the item folded over and rolled. So we're going to measure between the fold and the pocket. That is on mine six and a half inches, so around three and a quarter. I mark on the side here three and a quarter. And just put a little block. That is where I'm going to put my tie. Ties will be easy. Ties are pretty much going to be the length of your um, the length of your roll, and we will look at that a bit more when we get to the actual sewing section. So now we have our basic pattern designed. The next thing we need to do is add a seam allowance. I always like to work with a half inch seam allowance. So I'm going to add a half inch around the outside of all of my lines. If you like to use a quarter inch or five eighths, then that's fine too. It's your custom pattern. So you add on whatever is your preferred seam allowance around the outside. Just remember to make it um, the same on all four sides. And this is why we didn't use the bottom of our sheet of paper, because we actually need to add our seam allowance here on at the bottom. And if we'd used the bottom of the sheet as the bottom of our pattern, we wouldn't have room now to add on this seam allowance. Okay. So now all we need to do is cut out and we just trim around the outside. I'm going to do it roughly, but take your time and cut neatly on your lines. And that will be your custom designed tool or brush roll pattern ready to sew. Now that we have our pattern piece, time to cut our fabric. And we have one piece, well, one pattern piece, but we can use this one piece to cut three pieces of fabric. First thing we need to do is cut our outer. I've actually made a piece of pre-quilted fabric here with some fusible fleece, and I have a separate video for that. So look up here, one of these corners or other, YouTube will be now displaying you a link where you can click for the video for how to make your own quilted fabric if you want to make a, a quilted outer for your bag. So I've got this for my outer and I can cut that to size with the outside of my pattern piece. This is what I'm going to use for my lining fabric. So I cut one for my outer, then I use the same pattern piece to cut one for the lining. So we'll do those two first and then we're going to use the same pattern piece to cut our pocket. Where we have our pocket line marked here, if you fold your pattern piece over, now our pocket is going to be um, folded. It's going to be two pieces of fabric thick. So I'm just gonna fold these other bits out of the way. So this is now the shape and size of the pocket that we need. But because it's two pieces thick and cut on a fold, we need to just mark up here, cut on fold here. So I've marked my fabric here, cut on fold for our pocket. So if we bring over our piece of fabric, we basically need to cut, cut, cut it twice. So if we have our fabric like this, we create a fold and pop our pattern piece on the top with the fold of the fabric here and then we will cut on fold so that basically the pocket is two layers deep and you just cut around the outside. In terms of how to cut, you can either measure your pattern piece, transfer the markings onto a fabric, or you can measure the pattern piece, cut it with a ruler, or you can pin your pattern piece to the fabric and cut around the outside. So I'll go ahead and finish cutting and then we'll meet back for the sewing. Let's just double check the pieces that I have cut. 
I have my outer fabric, which is my quilted piece. If you haven't quilted your fabric already, according to that tutorial that I shared with you, then go ahead and fuse some fusible interfacing to the back of your outer fabric. Then I have my lining fabric, which is the same size as the outer. And then I have my pocket piece, which is folded. And I've gone ahead and pressed a fold along the top of my pocket piece too. Now we're ready to sew. And the first thing to do is to actually take this pocket piece and sew a line of top stitching along this top folded edge. That just gives it a little bit of strength and it also prevents it from stretching a little bit and becoming too baggy. So let's take this over to the machine and we'll sew a top stitch. I like to sew my top stitches a little longer than my regular stitch. So I'm going to set my machine to 3.5 and I'll sew a single line of stitches about an eighth of an inch from the fold. Now let's place this one on top of our lining fabric. So if you have a directional print or if you have a pattern on your lining fabric, place that face up and the print should go in this direction because our pocket will go on the bottom. So these fabrics are all face up and I'm lining up the raw edges on the sides and on the bottom. And then I'll use a few clips just to hold those in place. Now I'm just going to baste my pocket in place along the side seams here at around a quarter of an inch. I have a half inch seam allowance, so basting at quarter of an inch works well for me. If you have a quarter of an inch seam allowance, you'll need to do it just within your seam allowance so that it's not going to show later on, or you can remove your basting stitches later. Now it's time to divide our pockets to carry the things that we want to put into our tool bag. I'm going to fold mine in half, and just make a little mark here with a finger press so I can find out where the centre is on my bag, just here. And now it's time to decide how you want to put your pockets. When I designed my bag, I noticed that I needed about an inch for each pen. So I'm going to draw a line down the centre that gives me a nice straight starting point. And then from there, using a fabric marker, I'm going to mark lines every inch from the center out towards the sides. If you're making a caddy for your sewing tools, it's probably a good idea now to bring your tools over, lay them out across your pocket, and then mark the width of your pockets accordingly, depending on what you want to put in there. Same with crochet hooks, knitting needles, uh, artist brushes. You probably don't need an inch wide, but if you have cosmetic brushes, some which are thin, some which are um, wider, then you make custom pockets according to what you want to store. So I've finished marking my pockets, so now I need to sew them. I'm going to set a regular stitch length on my sewing machine and I'm going to start sewing in the centre here at the top of my pocket and um, slow down towards the bottom. So let's do this one first. Now I do want to back stitch here because I want the top of my pocket to be nice and secure and make sure those stitches aren't going to come undone. Okay. 
So I'm going to continue sewing my pockets. I'm always going to start from the top of the pocket and work down towards the bottom. And again, don't forget your back stitching because it's very important to make sure the top of the pocket isn't going to come undone during you during the time you use it. I'm going to continue sewing the rest of my pockets and I'll meet you back here when it's done. Now that my pockets are all sewn, we need to put on the ties that are going to be used to close the bag and hold it closed later on. If you remember when we did our pattern, we did mark a place where that would go. So let me bring the pattern over and that would go just here. So I've got my little mark for my pattern, for my ties. And I've taken a piece of ribbon, which is uh, roughly twice as long as the length of the pattern, or twice as long as the length of the pocket. And that's gonna go opposite just here, where I've marked it on my pattern from earlier. I'll put a clip, because the next thing to do is just to baste that in place. We don't want that moving later on. So a couple of quick stitches. So a few quick stitches is all we need to just hold that in place. Now something that's important at this point, if you notice your ribbon goes all the way across to the other side and could potentially be caught there in the seam allowance and we do not want that one want that to happen. So just take your ribbon, fold it and pop it down inside one of your pockets. And that way, you know, it's not going to get caught in the seam allowance when we sew it later. So let's bring across the outer. This is my quilted outer piece. And this is going to go face down on top of our pockets. And I'm going to pin or... Once everything is clipped or pinned in place, one thing we must remember to do is leave a gap. If we sew all the way around the outside, we won't be able to turn them back. So along the top edge, the edge which is opposite to the pocket, I've got my pocket down here. Along this top edge, I'm just going to mark up here to remind myself not to sew there because I need to leave a gap in my sewing to turn the bag the right side out. So let's take this over to the sewing machine, sew around the perimeter but not in this section at the top here. When I designed my pattern, I included a half inch seam allowance. So I'm going to make sure now that I'm sewing that half inch seam allowance that I included in the pattern when I designed it. So I've got to that final section and remember to leave that gap. To make the corners lie nice and flat when we've turned the things right when we've turned things right side out, we need to just trim away some excess fabric in the corner. So let's zoom in and I'll show you how I like to trim. One way you can trim is just to cut across the corner at a straight 45 degree angle. Of course, what you're doing is making sure that you're cutting close to this stitching but not through. You can also cut at a slightly more extreme angle than 45 degrees and that's how I like to cut and it just I just find it removes just that little bit of extra bulk from the corner that makes them look good especially when we're doing something with fleece or a, um, a padded or thicker fabric. So I'm cutting more than 45 degrees close to the stitching but not through in the corner in one direction and then as I turn the other direction And cutting this way just takes away more fabric than if we cut a straight 45 degree cut. So I'll continue to cut my other corners and just trim the bulk away and then we'll turn it right side down. 
So let's turn right side out and see what we've made. It's one of my favourite parts of bag making. The big reveal when you turn out and see how your fabrics all go together and see whether things have turned out as you expect. Hopefully they will have done because this is your own custom pattern. So I'm getting my fingers right into the corners and pressing the corners out nice and square. And a little bit of extra time spent now means our bag's going to look better later. You can also get um, a blunt tool up inside these corners and just give them an extra little press to make them uh, to lie nice and flat. And once things are turned, just roll these edges between your fingers and that just encourages the, um, the seam allowances here to lie nice and flat. So I'm going to finish just plussing with mine, making sure my corners look good and um, flattening out my seam allowances and then we'll take a look. So I have my project turned inside out and I've taken the opportunity to give it a quick press, especially up at the top here where we have this open area that isn't sewn. I've just carefully folded in the edges front and back so that they look pretty even because our next step is top stitching. I'm going to start at one area of the bag. I think I'll start where the ribbons are and I'm going to sew all the way around up here along the top of course and that will close the gap in our lining and back to where I started. Because I'm top stitching I'm going to use a slightly longer stitch length so I'm making mine a 3.5 and then let's take it over to the machine and make sure that I'm not going to sew over these ribbons. So as I'm sewing along the top, I'm just making sure these edges are even. I've pressed it nicely, I don't think I need any clips, but if clips or pins here would help you, then go ahead and do that before, step, before sewing this gap. So my top stitching is done, the gap in my lining is closed and we are all finished with our sewing. So let's pop a few things in our, in our little roll and see how it looks. So I've got my little bits and pieces in place. I can fold over at the top and then carefully roll up and use my ribbons around to tie it closed. And there we go, our little pen roll in my case, or for my collection of seam roll, seam rippers is now completed. I hope you've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed showing you some of the behind the scenes about how you can sew an easy pattern. If you would like to learn more about how to design your own sewing patterns or how to adapt a standard pattern and make it more custom, make it more your own, just leave me a comment and let me know the kind of things that you're interested in. It's always my passion to teach people new sewing skills and introduce them to things that they thought they couldn't possibly do and then have success doing. So please leave me a comment and I look forward to seeing you here on the channel again soon.